Global Trading Army. I want to welcome you to our weekly free live trading session. This is roughly a few hours after the start of the New York trading session. And what we're going to do is just go through what we generally do, which is a news cycle. We check on the news and then we look at a couple of charts and then we see if there's anything worth getting into. So I appreciate each and every one of you that have tuned in on Zoom. And those of you that are watching live on Facebook, if I can get a confirmation that we are live on Facebook and everything looks good, then I will go ahead. Yes, we are. Awesome. Yeah, so one more time just to confirm, I am not able to do the YouTube because once I go back into it, it only shows stop live streaming or copy streaming link, but it doesn't say stream to YouTube. So you probably only do one first time we're doing this, trying to do YouTube at the same time. Awesome, thanks. All right. So... Let us look right here at forexfactory.com. And this is one of the go-to news outlets that we look at. And as you see, we had British Pound news that came out this morning, their gross domestic product, which was less than what they expected. And so it probably sent the pound dropping. We'll take a look at that in a moment, though. And then nothing else for the rest of the day. The news cycle for the remainder of the week will have some Average earning in index tomorrow during our London session. And then a little bit later, Wednesday, US dollar CPI, which is a mover. Doesn't look like it's going to have much, but we'll see. Australian news on Wednesday night, 9.30 Eastern, the unemployment rate and the employment change. And if you look, Australia's rate, 5.2%. They're expecting it to get a little bit better to 5.1%. And if you know anything about the United States and what our unemployment rate is, it's three point, I want to say 6%, somewhere around there, doing very well. The joblessness has disappeared, so to speak. So our unemployment rate has gone down, which means more people are back to work, more taxpayers. And the news that we're going to look at right now, you're going to see a lot of News, it's always about Trump because he is a very um, imposing figure politically and whatever he says, it'll send the markets in a turmoil in a moment because of his wild swings one way or the other. It's, he's going to be real hard or he's going to be real lenient. You never know which way it's going to go. And if you're on the wrong side of a tweet that he puts out, it's going to be tough for you unless you have a hedge in place or a stop order that helps you go the other way. So he's been talking about the tariffs and putting it on Mexico because of them allowing hundreds of thousands of people to come through their country to our Southern border. And it's caused a lot of people to enter the United States illegally. Now, I'm not going to get into politics on this call, but you have to understand if you want to trade currency, you have to keep an eye on, politics. And you have to understand that things that are said politically will cause currency to go one way or the other. And it doesn't matter what side you're on, just matters that you can make money off of what's said. So you've got to think and anticipate. Think and anticipate. If you just have a, an intense hatred for one side or the other, well, it's going to cause you to not want to hear what they have to say and not want to listen to what's going on and it'll cause you to miss out on money. You have to be open-minded and listen, even though you may have one strong opinion one way or the other. You still have to hear what they're saying. So in this case, he has talks about tariffs with China, talks about tariffs against Mexico. Now he's saying tariffs are a beautiful thing. We're gonna take a look at what the chart of the US dollar against the Mexican peso did, and I was calling for it to go up for quite some time. So the news is just basically a lot about the sway back and forth. And one of the things you're going to see, you can't put too much stock in news because they control what you see and read. And if you don't think this is a mind control game, well, you're dead wrong. They are all about 
controlling what you think and causing people to do things that they want them to do so that they can take your money. It's all about money at the end of the day. They want to get your money and to get as much of it as they can. So they'll put out news articles that will sway you intentionally to believe one thing or the other while they are doing the exact opposite. So you have to think like an institutional trader. Think like an institutional investor. If you don't, you're going to get crushed. You want to learn how to trade Forex. You want to learn how to make money. You want to learn how to trade money for money rather than continuing to give time for money. It's not a get rich quick scheme, but you can make a lot of money. Forex has been around for a long time. And there's a reason that every bank trades Forex, every country treasury trades Forex, and the majority of the global corporations have Forex trading desks. So it will help you. And if you get the right educators, the right mentors, the right people, the right team around you, you will be successful. And that's what we are aiming to do here at Global Trading Army is to teach people how to become successful and do it the right way. So the point is, with the news, if you were looking at the news last week, they were saying the U.S. job market is coming to a screeching halt. It's, it's like, oh my God, we're going into recession. People are going to stop buying. It's like, no, 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 hold on. Think, think for a second. We are at the lowest unemployment rate in a long time. We've got the lowest unemployment in the history for certain segments, ethnic groups in our society. What does that mean? More people are back to work. So you're generally going to have around 3% of unemployment rate because you've got disabled, you've got people that are out of work for because they want to, you've got people that are homeless or jobless, uh, addicts, or they can't work. So you've got a lot of people in society that they won't work because they don't want to or they can't. So they're a part of that two to 3% of society. So you got to expect the unemployment rate is going to be there. So when it says it's coming to a screeching halt, well, we, we got more people, we got more jobs available than we've got people to work. Did you know that? So be careful what you read in the news and don't let it sway you. Read the charts. We will teach you how to read the charts. Right now, this is the US dollar index. And if you look, this is a daily chart over the last couple of years. Here's 2017. We hit a bottom here and then we started climbing. You can draw an imaginary line across the bottom. It's called drawing trend lines and a line across the top. And you can see that is in a channel going up and we've hit a bottom right here. So you can almost connect the lines. If you did well in connecting the dots when you were drawing in grade school, you'll do well in connecting the bottoms or the tips in chart analysis. It's not that hard. Little simple drawing, that's all it is. And it tells you when to buy and when to sell. A lot of people get in trade. I don't know when to enter and when to exit. How do I figure it out? Draw lines. It's pretty simple. A, an elementary student could do this. Connect the bottoms, connect the tops, and it gives you an idea of where to enter and where to exit. And then it tells you where to put your stop loss and where you may want to put your take profit. We'll teach you more about the, uh, the underlying concepts of uh, take profit and stop loss when you get into our trading school. So right now, if we look, we're coming off the bottom. Now we could pull back a little bit or we could shoot all the way up here, but the US dollar is coming off the bottom. So the US dollar is heading up. We've been looking for a bottom and it looks like we found it. It's set in over the last few days. Now you compare that to, let's look at the British pound index. And you will see, once it loads here, how it looks. It's different compared to the U.S. dollar over the last few years. Let me move that over here. Go back to 2017, just like you saw. So we are hovering down near a bottom, but you have a low point here. And if I put my line and you look all the way across, well, you've got another low point right here. That's called a double bottom. Well, you've got a lower low here and then another low up here. Well, this is a what's called a common chart pattern, inverted head and shoulders. Here's your left shoulder, your head, your right shoulder. If we break down and make a lower low, well, the inverted head and shoulder is obviously negated. But right now it's setting up like it wants to turn and rally. So the pound pulled back. 
remember what we just saw? What was the news that we just saw right over here? The British pound index, the news came out this morning and it was less than expected. And so the Australia down here, unemployment rate is going to come out later and they're expecting 5.1%. Well, with this British pound, we see that it was worse, much worse, the manufacturing. That's why the pound dropped. Well, is it gonna recover? Likely. You buy on rumors, sell on news. So what's gonna happen with the British pound? Will we find a, a bottom right here and turn and head back up or will we go lower? Well, it remains to be seen. We can take a look at some charts here in a second. But let me take a look at one more thing and that is, the U.S. top 30 index and see what is going on with the, what's called the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's what people say, ah, the stock market is up, the stock market is down. Well, some people, I have friends on my Facebook page were saying, oh, when we dropped off 800 points last week or the week before, and they're going, oh, look at Trump, he's destroying your economy. The market is falling through the floor. I just had to laugh at them. I said, you... You have no clue what's going on. We have hit a triple top and that's why we're pulling back. And we're gonna hit a bottom because it's called technical trading. Trump can say whatever he wants, the market is gonna move. It may have impulse moves based on what he says or certain presidents or prime ministers of their country, but it is moving based on technical analysis. Who moves the markets on the long term? Investors, traders. We move the market based on what we see. And it's those that have more money, and then we will follow the smart money. Those that have tens and hundreds of billions of dollars, when they start to move the market, you wanna follow them. Just grab onto their coattail, baby, say, oh, they're moving the market up, or they're moving it down. Yes, you can make money when it's going down. And so, right now, here's a triple top. One, two, three. So we naturally pull back. Well, we pull back to right here, which was 24,600, roughly 24,600, 616, somewhere around there. And then all of a sudden, one of the economists or the Fed chairman came out and said, we will help the market to recover and to keep it out of recession. And then boom, it exploded. Well, it can all be aptly timed. One thing they say is almost based on a perfect technical analysis. And then it exploded and went way up. People made a lot of money on this big move. About, let's see, 24, 600, about 1,500 points straight up. That's a lot of money. But if you look at where this bottom is, you go across here, you see we kind of have a bottom here, and bottom here, and then tops here. Old resistance becomes new support in trading. Now we're getting close up here. We could bounce back and forth in this area before we break through, this is the all-time high right here around 27,000, just shy of 27,000. I think we go to 30 to 35,000 in the U.S. stock market. I've been saying we were going to go back up to 25,000 a few years ago. I said the market's going to continue to run to 25,000. Well, not only did it run, it went almost to 27. And now it's getting ready to squeeze in. It squeezes in like a uh, bouncing up a stairs, but hitting a ceiling, and then it finally, boom, it'll break up. And that's what we're expecting. It may continue to vacillate in this little area, and then it's going to break out. So that's what we're expecting, U.S. dollar to rally, U.S. stock market to keep breaking out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. And I said we would look at uh, U.S. dollar against Mexico. So let's do that real quick. And I want to show you what this looks like. So let's look at this, uh, I'm gonna do a four hour chart for you. And let me take this off here. What you see, let me clear my chart so you don't have these lines to make you wonder what's going on here. All right, these bars are just each of the red and green bars are just candles. It's just basically price action. If it's a green bar, the price went up during that time. This is a four hour chart. So each of these candles are four hours in time. If it's a red bar, it went down during that four hours. That's all it means. But if you look right here, this was 
over the last week, the 7th of May, 24th of April, May 14th, 17th, 22nd, 26th, 29th of May, and then what happened? Boom, it exploded. And it went from 19.0500 all the way up to 19.8500. Friend, that is 8,000 pips. 8,000 pips. What does that mean for you? Well, let's do a calculator real quick and I'll, sh I'll tell you. In a perfect world, if you would have been sitting on these and holding it and you had the most conservative position that you could have, which is 10 cents per pip, then you just multiply that by 0.1. And you could have made $800 on that move if you held it from the bottom to the top and it only took 12 hours to do that, roughly a little over 12 hours to do that. 800 pips, very strong move. Why did it happen? Well. U.S. dollar against the Mexican peso. You have to understand, Trump made an announcement, said, Mexico, if you do not stop letting all these people from Central and, and South through your border, from El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, and the southern areas, if you do not stop these hordes of people coming through your country and letting them through to ours, we're going to knock a tariff on you of 5%, and we're going to add to it every month another 5%. Well, what did that do? That made the US dollar shoot up against the peso and the peso lost value. <laughs> Went all the way up and it just back and forth, up and down, up and down, big moves. <laughs> and then over the weekend, he said, oh, well, we'll ease up on you. We'll stop the tariffs. And what happened? Boop, you look next morning and it's all the way back down here, almost all the way back to the start. This was a political situation that became a potential money-making situation if you were on the right side of this trade. Now, if you're on the wrong side, well, you got smoked. That's why we teach you do not over leverage, use proper risk management, learn your trading strategies, understand political, social, and economic events, and use them to your benefit. Slow and steady wins the race. If you come and join us at Global Trading Academy, Global Trading Army, currently, we used to be Global Trading Academy, but now we're the Army and you learn the right way, we'll teach you how to make money. We've got plenty of tools available for you, videos. We've got classes, live trading sessions like what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna show you to get into a trade here in a minute. We've gotta take our time and look at it. And then you can learn how to trade the right way. So down here, I've got, obviously you see the slide. I'm gonna to move to, well, actually I like this chart right here. Let's just put another, trend line. I'm just going to draw a trend line. I can see it because I've got so many years of just staring at charts, but I just see this line going right through here. You know, we're, we're coming off of a technical channel bottom. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to connect it perfectly, yeah, well, you know, for OCD folks that are out there, let's move it down just a tad and connect those dots almost perfectly. And you say, well, what about these? Well, you're going to have that. Let's zoom in just a tad here. You're going to have little bit of moves that are going outside your channel. They're called momentum moves because of a big move and a lot of money. It's going to take it right past that point. But it's like in wrestling, they throw you against the ropes. Well, you're going to push up against the ropes and you're going outside that boundary just a little bit, but then whew, you snap back into it. And that's a beautiful time. Look at that shot right back up. So U.S. dollar is coming down. If we break this channel, well, we're going to come all the way back down here to this bottom area which is 18 something. I think the US dollar against the Mexican peso is gonna turn and go up. I think we eventually see 20 to 25, maybe even 30 pesos on the US dollar. Why? Anybody know why? Tell me why I think it's gonna go that high. Just type it in that chat box. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna look at another chart. So I'm gonna open this up to the multiple screens. And let's go ahead and take a look at, well, y'all y'all been hearing about cryptocurrency. Let's check, take a look at Bitcoin. All right, so Bitcoin hit almost 9,000. It hit $9,000 a few days ago. And it came off the bottom way down here Back in January and February, uh, 3,500 Bitcoin per U.S. dollar. 
I'm sorry, 3,500 US dollars per Bitcoin. No comments, any comments on Facebook of why the US dollar is gonna rally and go to 25 or 30 against the US dollar, against the Mexican peso. Let me know if you see anything out there. I will let you know. All right, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it's the wall, baby, the wall. If we start building that wall, Trump said he's going to build that wall over the next two years. He's going to put miles and miles of wall on the U.S. border. What's that going to do to the peso? <sighs> down, down, down. It's going to drop in value. So if you get long the peso, uh, long the U.S. dollar against the peso, you're going to make money over time. So look in here. This is uh, Bitcoin. And it has rallied over time from 3,500, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, just shot straight up. Well, what's it doing right now? It looks like it's taking a break. It's in a technical, this, we could call this a flag and pennant pattern, a bullish pennant pattern. But you've got to see, we've broken that down channel right here. And now we still have a very high peak right here. I think it'll probably come back to 6,000. It could even come back to 5,000. Some people are saying, no, it's not coming back. It's going to turn and keep going. It could be. Right now, it's in a little consolidation sideways between 7,500 and 8,000, so a $500 range. So if it turns and breaks up and it goes above this level right here, if it goes above 8,200, I'm a buyer. I'm believing that it'll go past 9,000. It'll probably go to 10, 15. They're saying 50,000. Well, all right. Interesting. All right, let's move away from cryptocurrency and let's go to the British pound GBP. And I like to trade GBP against the Australian. And we're going to look, give you a top down analysis real quick. Let me put my template back so I can see and read it. And then I'm going to go here, do a monthly check. So right now we are in the month of June and the candle, you can barely see the candle right there. It's right in these moving averages. You've got a nice support level at 1.80, that's $1.80. But it's in a, bit, a bullish move right here where it's popped up, trading sideways, looks like it wants to pop up again. So this is all in a nice channel going up, even though we're in a major channel going down. So the, the smaller time frame is up, the longer time frame has been down. Will the British pound break out and rally against the Australian currency? Well, I'm going to go on down to the week time frame. Let's get a closer view here. The week has the 50 moving average crossing above the 200, which is called a golden cross. And when you see that, you know that potential is to rally. Well, we're at 82, 1.8207. So we could pull back one more time and then rally, or this week could be the breakout week. You see how we came down, and this week here was a breakout week. Well, it may have looked like during the beginning of the week that it wasn't going to do anything. It was just kind of hovering here, and then all of a sudden, boom, it exploded. Well, let's go back here and look. Let's see what day that was, or that the week was the week of April 21st. So I'm going to go to the day chart and see the week of April 21st. Well, here it is. Look back here. So this is right here. So here's April 21st. So the, it started out very slow, and then all of a sudden, boom, one day it just exploded. How much did it go? It went from 1.8200 all the way up to 1.8450, let's call it. That's 250 pips. At 0 0.01, that's $25. At 0 0.10, that's $250. At 1.0 lot, that's $2,500 that you could have made in one day. Now, we're not greedy and you want to be realistic. You need to have a proper account value, account equity to trade with certain lot sizes. You want to use risk management and proper trading strategies. Well, right now, we're kind of hovering around the 200-day moving average. It looks to me, when I get down to the week, it looks it looks like it's a week. I'm sorry, when I look at the day chart. So the week looked like it was it potentially could rally. 
when you get on the day, it's sitting right here on this 200 average and it's showing weakness. Why? Because it's sitting under it and it keeps breaking under it. Well, it closed under it one, two here, and we haven't closed under it again. You want at least three to four closes under the 200 to give you a confirmation. Well, we've rallied up and then we came back. We rallied up and we've come back. So what is that telling me? When I see these wicks on the top side, I got more wicks on the top side. It looks like it wants to, there's a lot of selling pressure pushing it down. It tries to push up, boom, and it comes back down. That's what a wicks represents. Anytime you see long wicks, well, then the follow through is to the downside. If you see wicks on the bottom, let's go and look at it. Well, like right here, you start seeing wicks on the bottom, pushing up, pushing up, and then boom, it explodes to the top. Look over here, wicks on the bottom, Long wicks, you know it's probably going to go up. Very strong likelihood. It's when you see wicks on the top, like right here. Look at that. High wicks on the top, plus we've had a big move. Boom, it came way down. All right. Teach you how to understand all this and use it to your advantage. So this is a day chart. Shows weakness. Looks like we're going to drop off. We could come all the way back to 181. Here's my support level right here, 1.80. I am thinking sell on the British pound just by looking at this chart that we've been pushing up into resistance. So I'm gonna go on down to the smaller time frames, work my way down. Let me go to one hour here and 30 minute here. You wanna get a good analysis of your different time frames and see what's going on. Each of these looks like, yeah, Weakness, weakness, weakness all over the place like we're getting ready to go south of the border. So I am going to enter a sell on this one and let's just see what it looks like. Boom. And if it goes up against me, I'll add another sell, but I think we're going to go down. So this is a one minute time frame. Most people don't trade off the one minute. It's very volatile. You got to have a stomach of steel to handle that one minute time frame. So here's my trade down here. Shows you in the bottom. Enter to sell at 1.82046. We normally disregard that last number. It's called the micro pip. It's a thousandth of a basis point in currency. The margin, I only use $50.91 of real money to make this trade. My commission was 63 cents. So I want to make sure I cover at least that. And my spread, my spread is the difference between the buy and the sell, which is roughly about 1.5 pips. So you got to take that into consideration. You've got to overcome the spread and the commission. So 1.5 pips at $2 lot size, $2 per pip. That's roughly $3.50 or let's call it $3 just to make it even. So $3.63 is what I need to overcome in order to make money, to be in profit. So I said it looks like it's going to come down and all we have to do is break down below this and we could come down below that. So I'm going to leave that running down on the bottom. While we're doing that, I'm going to take a look at one of the major trading pairs, the most liquid trading pair on the planet, the euro against the U.S. dollar. What is it doing? Well, we know the U.S. dollar on the index was looking like it's going to head up. The euro is likely going to go the other way because it is the anti-dollar. So if I go back to this chart, and I'm going to put in the euro currency, which is EXY. Let's look at how that fares. Okay, so if I were to zoom out, what's that chart doing? Over the last several months, this is since the last year, dropped off, and then it got in a down channel trend. It's ch channeling downward. The lows are getting lower and the high points are getting lower. So you're getting lower lows and lower highs. We are where right now? Where are we? Well, we're coming off the top of the channel. We're heading down. So what are we likely to do? Same thing it did here. Same thing it did here. Whoop, straight down. So what I will would be doing is selling. I'd be selling the euro against the US dollar because the US dollar has the opposite chart. Like it's coming off the bottom, it's gonna rally. And they're saying, oh, over here it says it's a buy. 
Well, you can look at these technicals and see what these people are saying, or you can go by what the chart's saying. It's probably saying that because of certain indicators or a lot of people are holding buys and they're thinking it's going to go up because it's had a, a hard rally, but then the bottom's going to fall out. Well, come down here and look what these guys are saying. EXY, sell on H4, Euro currency index, four hour time frame short. Look, there's your down channel. This guy did it for you right here. Munya, thank you for your analysis. There's the down channel, the lines they drew, and they're saying we're right here, that it's going to come all the way down here. Bravo, Munya, bravo. I agree. Well, the technicals are saying buy, yet the people that are technical analysis people are saying sell. So the indicators may point one way, but you got to look at the chart and you got to see what it's doing. So let's go on back over here, see what we're doing. Okay, so we said we had to overcome $3.63. So I only have about half of that to go and then we should be good. Sometimes it takes time and then sometimes in a moment, it can explode in our favor. So Euro USD, I'd be a seller of Euro USD, though, let's look at this. This is the H4 chart. It's kind of bullish right now that we could push back up and put in a double top. So it's at 1311, 1.1311, ignore the last number. And it could come back up here to 1350. That would be a double top or put in a lower high. I'd be looking to sell. So right now, it looks like the Euro could go higher before it goes lower. So would I be a buyer of the euro at this moment? Potential that I could squeeze out some pips to the upside, 1311. I see a little support right here around 1310. Some stronger support on the 15 minute time frame, just above that at 13. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a buyer of the euro against the US dollar. So I'm gonna say, what am I gonna do with that? All right, I'm gonna move my take profit up here to 1330. It could go to 1350, I don't care. I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna take about 18 pips, that's gonna be about $36. And I'm gonna put my stop loss down here. Stop loss is to protect you. I'm gonna put it down here 1289. So I'm gonna give up a $22 if it goes against me for a potential to gain $36 if it goes in my favor. All right. So that is that. Let's go ahead and check back in on the British pound against the Australian. We'll do something else real quick while I can see it. Let me make sure that gets changed. There we go. All right. So I said this was a sell. So it did drop down. We bounced up a little bit. It's getting ready to come down further. Everything's looking good. So let me set my parameters on that. I'm going to move the stop loss up here to 82.22. So I'm going to give up $24, 17 pips. Where am I going to go with it though? I'm going to go way down here to 81.42. So I'm going to take $87, basically a one to, I'll call it about one to four, risk to reward. So I'm going to give up 24 for the potential to earn $87. That can happen in five minutes could happen in two hours. Don't know, you just have to wait and see, but your analysis will help guide you and you just have to be patient. It's a marathon, not a sprint. No Usain Bolts up in here. You want the long distance runners like Dave Waddle. If you don't know who Dave Waddle is, you need to go look that up on YouTube, Dave Waddle. And I'll just show you real quick so you can see an amazing race. D-A-V-E, come on, let's see here, D-A-V-E, Dave Waddle, 1972 Olympics, look that race up right there and see what happened, very unassuming individual, had health issues, and way at the back of the pack, he stayed at the back, had tendonitis in his knees, and then so look how far back he is. I'm gonna zoom in or fast forward this video. So it was a mile. There he goes, making his move. Zoom in, he's coming around. Here he comes to the finish line. Never gave up, 
never gave up. Boom. Dave Waddle. Tendonitis in his knees, hampered in training, and was in the back of the race, didn't have a chance, and won. All right. Anything's possible to them that believe. All right. So basically, this is the setup we have. You know, I can take profit right now on the GBA UD trade. It's only 13 cent. Well, negative. It's going to oscillate back and forth. But it's getting ready to fall again. Euro USD trade is down here. We're going to leave that for a minute. Actually, I'm going to put that on the lower thing and let us look at that down here. Euro USD. That way you can get a good look at it. And I'm not going to go much longer. Just wanted to give you a taste of what we do here at Global Trading Army. That if you really want an education, you want to learn the right way, you want to learn with us, earn with us, grow with us, you want a company that has integrity and that has transparency, you want to be a part of Global Trading Army. We are legit and we are about helping you the right way, helping you along, teaching you. If you have a desire to learn how to trade Forex, you want to find the right company. There's companies out there charging thousands and thousands of dollars for basically nothing. They do not do live simulation trading like I'm doing right now with you, where you can follow along and keep 100% of the profit. Very few do that. Why? Because they're frauds. If you want to know somebody that's real, well, they have to be able to get into a live trading session with you and show you what they can do. And if you make money while they're doing live trading in real time, that's when you know it's legit. If not, run away. If all they want to do is teach you content, lecture, video instruction, friend. You're not going to make money that way. They probably don't make money. If you want to learn to make the, the money the right way, you want to learn how to profit from the most powerful financial market in the world, you want to join us. You want to be a part of Global Trading Army. All right. So still letting this roll. It could happen any moment. Kind of a lull here, a little bit of slow period but we still should be okay in a few minutes. Just takes time. You've got to be patient, be in the right setup, and then it will happen for you. Just so let's just Taylor, give it one moment. Go ahead. Wayne Taylor said he noticed that you looked at the four-hour chart and entered it in the one minute. Are those the key time frames to focus on? Okay, so let me explain that to you. Very good question. He said he noticed that I looked at the four hour chart and I entered on the one minute. Well, it doesn't matter what time frame you make a trade on, you can enter because it's all the same. The time frame just shows you what's happening in that specific time one minute, five minute, 15 minute. So, like I've heard it said before, well, I only buy on the 15 minute time frame. So, people say, well, I can't have a one hour chart open and buy on that. Like, what? What are you talking about? You can enter on any chart, and I know what you're asking. I'm going to explain that to you in a second. I'm just clarifying something else uh, that I've heard because you get people that are teaching that don't really know what they're talking about, and they say, no, don't buy on the one-minute time frame. You want to buy on the one hour, or you want to buy on the 30-minute, or you want to buy on the four-hour. Friend, you can buy on whatever time frame is open at the time because the entry and exit, the order box is the same. The price is the same. It doesn't matter. It's just the time frame that you're looking at. Now, how do time frames work? Well, it's like you're in the sky in a plane and you're looking down over some land and all you see is a forest. You cannot see what's inside of that forest. So how do you get into it? Well, you can see the overlay of all the property and say, wow, that's a beautiful property. I wonder where the boundaries are at on that property. What does it look like down there? Well, you got to get closer and closer to see where to enter and then to see what's going to happen. So we go to the month's time frame and you do a bird's eye view and you look at the month time frame. The longer time frames determine the overall direction of where it's going to go. So you look at the month time frame and say, okay, I see. It really looks like it's going to go this way. Whoop. But you got to step down in time to the week and the day 
it's kind of like you're at the optometrist and they're moving those lenses for you to see. And they say, well, is this clear or that one, this one or that one? And as they keep stepping you down, they narrow down to the specific lens that you need. And you say, wow, that's it. So you come down month, week, day, four hour, one hour, 30 minute, 15 minute, five minute. Most people stop at five minutes. I go all the way to the one minute, much clearer. The lower time frames, one minute, five minute, 15 minute, determine my entry. Longer time frames determine direction, smaller time frames determine my entry. So, what does that mean? If you look at the longer time frame, it says we're going to go this way. But the lower time frames are in a pullback going the other way, and it could pull back 100 pips against you before it turns around and goes in the longer time frames intended direction. I hope that makes sense to you. So be patient and know what to trade based on technical analysis and based on looking at the time frames, using them to your advantage. So right now, I looked at the overall time frame, I also looked at the index, the currency index, the underlying currency movements. So Euro USD popping up a little bit against me. So, you know, no biggie. Got a little resistance right here. I don't think it's going to go that high. It could. Let me zoom in a little bit here. A little resistance right here at 1.8215. My stop loss is 82.22. We only have about a... 1.7 pip, uh, maybe one pip uh, spread. So I could add another position at this point or if it pops up a little more because I strongly believe we are going to break down. Actually, yeah, this is GA, not Euro USD. Euro USD is down here. So I have a buy on this believing that it's going to rally. It hasn't quite, we're in a lull, so it hasn't quite gone up yet, but still looks very good on the one hour chart that we could have found support and it's gonna rally and take us out here in a little bit. It may take five, 10, 15 minutes to do that. Let me drop down to the one minute here. And then over here, I'm gonna do a five minute. So still looking good. Looks like we're about to, to turn, we're kind of, Getting higher lows, the 100 is crossed above the 200 on the one minute time frame. And the same thing over here, we look like a 50 wants to cross above the, take the RSI off just for a minute. 50 wants to cross above the 200 here in a minute, but it looks really good, like we're about to pop on your old USD. So here we go, once you see this, green bars start chop, chop, chop. We could get a 10, 15, 20 pip move in a matter of 30 seconds, two minutes. Here's a two minute move, one, two, and it popped 12 pips. So it could happen that quick. I could choose to take profit if I wanted to. This is GBPAUD up here. I could enter another sell at 82.10, which I think I may do because I really believe that it wants to fall off here. So I'm gonna do one more here at 82.10, and I'm gonna move the stop loss to the same area. So I doubled up 82.22 roughly. And I'm gonna put my take profit down here, same spot. Go a little bit lower. All right. So I basically added to my position expecting that it's really not gonna go much higher. And I've taken the risk, just a small risk, about uh, 11 pips on that one. Most people will do 20 or 30. I say if it pops to that point and breaks through this, well, it'll probably keep going higher. So I'll just take the small loss. And then if it goes even higher, I'll be looking for another entry that's up better, uh, much higher, a better entry. So I'm not going to give up much more than what I have, 11 pips on one entry, 17 on the other. Because what if it runs 20 or 30 pips beyond that, you're holding a drawdown. I'd rather just take the small loss and re-enter at a much higher clip if it has an impulse move, a stop hunt, anything that goes against us. So just a little more time and these should play out in our favor. Again, the market is real slow, just looking to make this happen. So 
Give me one second while I look at this on another. All right. Again, the British pound is a very strong currency and it can move 15 to 20 pips in five seconds. That's how quick it moves. And we're just waiting on that to make its move real slow, real low. We may end up adjusting our class time free trade session in the week to find a little bit better time that the market will be moving a little bit better that I can show you how we get in and get out. But this is still okay in that we had time to analyze things, see what it's looking like make an entry without a lot of emotion and we have an understanding of what it's going to do or an expectation and it's called high probability trading looking for clean setups i like the five minute chart on this one on the british pound we're right here new five minute turned over right here this should come all the way back down that was a nice strong impulse but we should come back down here in a moment So just waiting for that to play itself out. And again, if it pops all the way up here, I will wait and see, and I may get back in. Even if it starts coming down, I'll still get back in. So I took a loss, a stop loss as a protection to keep you from losing more than is necessary if it goes strongly against you. So Euro is finally popping a little bit in our favor, and I have four different currencies I'm working with, the British pound against the Australian dollar, the Euro against the US dollar, four different currencies. So I'm not doubling up my risk, not stacking against myself by trading, say, pound against the US dollar and then pound against Australia and then Australia against the US dollar. I'm using four different currencies and I'm in a buy and I'm in a sell. So I entered a sell without having held a position, that's called short selling. You can do that in currency trading. You enter a sell and if it goes down, you make money. Markets go down much faster because of fear than they do go up. Though sometimes they'll take off and run if Trump makes a tweet in favor of one or the other. All right, let's see here. Just a little bit long, probably go about another 10 minutes. We've gone kind of long, very slow moving session and it's gonna happen. A lot of times you wanna wait and let things work out, uh, find the right entries and then you will know what to do. But at least giving you some good value, good content to see what you need to learn. And I know it's a lot to look at, but we will help you to learn how to read these charts. And we have a strategy, we have software, we have different programs that'll help you maximize your trading. A lot of live trading sessions, that's not all over the place. We stick to certain strategies and execute. Uh, so Wayne Taylor said, I was told that we buy when price is above 50 MA. Do you apply that strategy? And sell when it's below the 50 MA. I don't know where you got that from, but uh, that's not always the case. It depends what time frame are you looking at? Because uh, let me just give you an example. Let me, uh, let me think here. You know, I gave a trade a while back and I'm gonna look for that. While we're watching this, let me just go ahead and open a chart up and then I'm gonna look at something real quick. Uh, let me do a base template, just moving averages. And 
and I think this might be the one here. All right, so this is a four hour chart called the dealer chart. And let me, I'm gonna go, actually, let me go out further. Let me go to the day chart. All right, so this is a day chart. And you see how the British pound against the Japanese yen tanked, came all the way down here and then put in a low. Then we rallied up and then we kind of curved, looks like a curve called a rounded top. If I were to put an ellipse going across, it just rounds off. Well, we had a flash crash right here, so let's zoom in. One more time, flash crash way down here and then it popped back up. We sign us at this thin red line and you see where, I'm actually gonna move this down here to this point right here. So this is a low, okay, called a bottom. The flash crash came way down here and then started the next day right there on that line and then rallied all the way up. So the purple line is my 50, this is a 50 day moving average. Well, if you were under the 50 and you were to sell at this point, if you opened up, looked at it and you sold, let's go to closer because if I put this line way over here, okay, and you're here and you're saying, well, we're under the 50, so it's always a sell. You've got to use certain understanding, certain wisdom. I use moving averages and this light blue line is my five period moving average. So on the day chart, it's called the five-day moving moving average. On the hour chart, it's the five-hour moving average. On the one-minute chart, it's the five-minute moving average. Very strong indicator for strong moves, trends. So here, I'm a, I would be in a strong buy by looking at this right now. And I may reconsider my British pound sell by looking at this chart right here. Now, this is the pound against the yen that's come way down on the day time frame. And we're sitting on top of the 5 and the 10. This is a beautiful buying opportunity right now because we are catching up. Looks like we're going to go up. We could go to 139. We could come all the way back up here. We're under the 50. Here's the 50. So I'd be buying based on this right now, even though we're under the 50. And I would maximize why would you want to wait till it comes way back here and gets on top of the 50 to give you a buying signal. You give up 700 pips profit, huge. So what we do is we look for reversal patterns, indicators that tell us that we're at potential turning points and we use the moving averages in our favor to our benefit to help us understand moving. And I've got videos on moving averages that when people watch them, they're going, wow, game changer your mind will just totally open up and it will help you see by just zoom out. You see how when it gets on top, yeah, you have wicks that'll come down. You, you don't want to over stopped out, but these are stop hunts, big moves against you. But once it gets on top and it starts rolling, it'll roll all up to the major moving average. And then here again, nice trend, nice trend. Well, big moves. And then here it got in a trend and it went all the way down, held the five stop hunt came all the way down further. Now we're starting to solidify. I hope that clarified it for you. So with that being said, let me look at the British pound against Australia on the day chart and see. Okay, so this looks a little bit different on the day chart than it did on the British pound Japanese yen where I said the potential for this to drop off and come way down here is pretty strong because we're getting wicks on the top side. So that was my analysis from, and I say, I'm gonna stick with it even though the British pound looks bullish against the yen, 
it still looks potential bearish against the Australian dollar, that we may be at a good point catching it to come down and drop all the way here. Could very well do it. All right. Excel. So still may roll down here. Five minute, we're at that little resistance there. If it pops and takes me out, it's no biggie. And the euro, so I'm down a little bit. I'm down about, let's see, total of, oh, it didn't show me right there, $25 on a margin of $160 and $1,300 in this account. And this is a demo account just for trading purposes live in front of you. And we're just waiting for the display. Comes way down. I think we just lost connection with him. We should be back shortly. Okay, he, well, he should be back shortly. In the meantime, for the new, the ones who are no long, who are not yet members with GTA, um, Jerock also offers, we have our live classes. He has, by the way, today at 12, should be starting soon, his live master training classes where he teaches all about the MAs, the moving averages. I thank you, Wayne. We appreciate you guys very much too. Thank you for everyone for um, taking time out of your busy schedule to come on and be here with us. J Rock will be on shortly. He had some connectivity issues and just fine. And there he is. No comment. I think it's sign telling you your master class is supposed to start. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. All right. Well, uh, everybody, it has been a pleasure showing you. The markets and i do hope you join us at globaltradingarmy.com be sure to get back to the person that told you about it and check out our website and if you want to learn how to trade forex we have the opportunities available for you so y'all have an awesome day god bless y'all take care and we will see you again soon bye-bye